What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how I used my laser to make this cool clock out of maple. So I used a clock mechanism that I ordered from Amazon and some maple that I resawed on the bandsaw to get it to about 7 millimeters. So first I had to head on over to Pixabay, which is my favorite website for free images. If you've got one that you like better, feel free to use that as long as it's got some good stuff for this build. So we need a clock face and then we need some kind of image to put on the clock. So I chose a cool butterfly that kind of gives me like Celtic knot vibes. So go ahead and search by illustrations for clock face. I went ahead and chose this one, though later I'll delete those hands off it, so don't worry about that. I went to search butterfly illustrations and it's a, it's a treasure trove, man. There's so much here. So I went with this one. I really like the Celtic knot kind of pattern that's in the wing. So I bought, sorry, I brought both images into uh, Paint 3D and basically laid them on top of each other and made them one image. I also deleted the hands off the clock face there with the eraser tool. Paint 3D is a free image in Windows, but what's most important is you make them both the same image. Go ahead and bring that image into XCS. I use XCS, the uh, software meant for the X tool. I mean, you can use Lightburn too, but just some of the tips in this video in the next few minutes specifically may not apply. So we are going to go ahead and bring the grayscale up on this so that it engraves as dark as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and put the power up to 100 and the speed I'm going to bring to about 150, 160 or so because I'm engraving maple and maple takes a little bit more power. Other woods I can crank that speed all the way up and it's as dark as I need it to be. So one thing we got to do first, you could do this in your software like Paint 3D, you can do it at that step, but we need to make this so that it's only the black pixels. Uh, there's actually white that you can't see there. So if I, yeah, you can see it if I use the invert tool, all that black area is actually white. So we need to go ahead and use the edit image tool in XCS, grab the fuzzy wand that is selected by default, and click on all the closed off white spaces in the image. So that includes that little circle inside the nine, anything closed off inside the wings, anything closed off inside the bug body. So I can actually continuously use that invert tool to check on it and make sure that I got everything. So one little note here, uh, I'm not running my machine right now, so I don't have the image of the bay of my machine, which is black and would make it really obvious that this image has white in it. Um, I hope that makes sense, but I don't want to run my machine right now so that y'all can continue to hear me. So it's a white background, you know, so it's harder to see where I need to remove the white. Anyhow, it's really easy, promise, but you could do it at the Paint 3D step if you want. So there we go. We got it all, it looks like. So let's go ahead and take an outline of this shape because we also need to cut it out of the wood, just not just engrave it. So let's go ahead and use the outline tool in XCS, which is very handy. Uh, go ahead and uncheck the add inner outline checkbox there because we only want the outline of the shape to cut. So now is where you can really decide what you want the edge of your clock to look like if you use an XCS. You can just take a buffered outline, you know, an offset distance of two is what I'm using here. If you want the edge of the clock to be black, you can go ahead and make it zero for the offset distance, so it'll cut right along the edge. If you want a bigger white space, pick something like four or five. So that vector we are going to turn into a cut. We are going to go power 100, speed 5, 2 passes. That's sort of my default that I like to check first. So don't forget to enter a thickness like I did in that clip. My thickness here was about 7 millimeters. And you can see right there I did a couple of tiny little test clocks first in the corner to get my settings right. And it ended up being about 5 and 2 because this maple is so thin. So speed 5, 2 passes, and this dropped right through. Now, I didn't optimize the image that you see cut out here, but the one that I just showed you how to make is optimized. So the mistake I made was I had it set up so that the clock engraved and then the butterfly engraved after instead of as the clock was engraving, and that added so much time. But the file I just showed you how to make is optimized, so it won't do that. All right, so now we need to secure these two halves together and we need to get it right because we're going to punch a hole in the middle and we don't want this clock to look all goofy once it's glued up and askew. So go ahead and use some blue tape across the middle seam. That's how I like to do it anyway. Then I can make sure that the edge of the clock is lined up perfectly like it is. 
And then you can go ahead and wrap the blue tape around the edge to secure it nicely. Because we're going to have to punch a hole in this, we don't want anything moving, and then we're going to have to attach the mechanism and the little plate on the back that I'll show you in a minute. So I got this little DIY clock mechanism kit from Amazon. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it. What's cool is that it comes with a bunch of different hands that you can use. Uh, so you're going to end up with spares. The mechanism's super easy. It takes one little AAA battery. And then it even comes with a little bracket for hanging. And also something you punch into the wall, those little white things, uh, to be an anchor to hang upon. Hopefully that made sense. I know it looks like a lot of pieces, but it's really easy. This rod will basically stick through from the back, and then you thread things onto it and friction fit things onto it. The little pictogram that comes with it in the top left is all you really need. So now I'm taking a combination square that is set close to the middle of this and averaging it out by measuring at the widest point and making little marks. That should let me get the center dead on, no problem. Is something that I'm super proud of. I just made this little file really quick and it works perfectly. I basically sized a square cutout to the little clock mechanism. This is going to make it so that when I glue this on the back, not only is it going to hold the two pieces of the panel together, but it's going to stop this mechanism from rotating. So that's what it's going to look like. Now we got to get a hole punched through the middle of this thing. So I went ahead and found a drill bit that's just slightly wider than the diameter of the little spindle that needs to go through the clock. And then I realized that I'm not going to be able to do this on my drill press because it won't fit. I can't get to the center. So back to the hand drill I go. 